Do you have a crusty, frozen, broken, cutoff valve that needs to be replaced? Today at the House of Hacks, we're going to do just that. Hi, makers, builders, and do it yourself. It's Harley here. Today, we're going to remove this old shutoff valve that doesn't work anymore and replace it with a bright, shiny new one. To do this should require just a few minimal tools. First off, I've turned off the water and drained all the taps, so there should be minimal water in the system. However, there'll still be a little bit of residual water that'll drain out when we cut into the pipe. So I've got a pile of towels to soak up any water that, that does come out. We have a couple wrenches we'll need. This is a 15 16 inch open end wrench, and this is a 5 8 inch open end wrench. And we have a tubing cutter that we'll use to remove the old one. And we have our new valve. Now these valves have compression fittings on them, so they just slide on and then you tighten down the nut. However, once a pipe has had a compression fitting on it, you don't want to put a compression fitting back on the pipe in that same location. So on the old pipe, we're just going to cut it off. Since even if we did try to remove it and take off the compression fitting, first of all, it's going to be really difficult. And second of all, even if we got it off, we wouldn't be able to use that section of pipe. So we're just going to cut it off. It does have plastic lines going into it. So we will remove those plastic lines because those can be reused. If you have plastic or braided lines going into the output side of the shutoff valves, then those can be taken off and reused. But if you've got hard solid lines going in there, again, those need to be cut off as well. For this particular project, I'll be removing the two plastic lines and then cutting off the valve from the main input line. Put down a towel before opening up the lines to catch any water that might still be in them. Then a 5 8 inch wrench loosens the connections until they can be removed by hand. A small tubing cutter makes quick work of removing the old valve assembly. Let the towel wick up enough water from the pipe that it won't make a mess when putting the new valve assembly on. A cleaning brush makes sure we have a good connection to help prevent any leaks at the joint. Put on the compression nut and then the compression ring. Fit the valve assembly and make sure it's oriented the way that works best for your environment. Thread the compression nut onto the valve and tighten it down. It should be good and tight, but you don't need to strong arm it. Make sure the valves are closed and turn on the main water. Okay, that was a bit exciting. I made sure before I turned the water on to have the valves all turned off because I haven't hooked up the inputs on this yet, or the outputs. And so I turned on the water because I wanted to make sure that this, this main in inlet here was tight and didn't have any leaks on it. But what I failed to do was turn off the faucet up above and it was turned on in the middle position. So when I turned the water on, the cold water side got pressurized, went up through the faucet out the hot water side and came out through the unconnected connection. So lesson learned, remember before you turn the water on to turn off the faucet here if everything's not tightened up and buttoned up down below. But the good news is we don't have any leaks down here. And a good way to test that is to use a piece of tissue paper. Tissue paper soaks up water really easily and just the tiniest drop will cause it to swell up and also change color. So it's really obvious if there's a tiny leak, even if you can't see it or feel it, it shows up on the tissue paper real well. And if I run this around here and get it up, up in that crack of that seal, and run it around the top, it's completely perfectly dry. There's no change in it whatsoever. So that tells me that, that this first connection has a good seal on it. So let's continue with the last two connections. Okay, a lot of times plastic line on the end here has a triangular shaped end on it that is designed to kind of go inside the pipe and, and provide a good seal on it. This one doesn't though. This one is just straight pipe and then has a compression fitting on it. You shouldn't really reuse compression fittings once they've been used once. So I'm going to cut this off and then um, use the, the nuke fitting that came with this to uh, connect this up.
And in this case, for the other end, we have braided line, and that has a rubber seal on it, so that can just go thread right back on. And on this, on this rubber stuff, you don't need to really torque it down. You just need to get it snug. And again, the tissue paper test. And everything, everything's nice and dry. And now we have everything connected down below and the valves turned on. And we can see we have water on the cold side and water on the hot side. So everything seems to be good. I haven't, didn't see any leaks with the tissue paper. I like to leave it sit for a couple hours and then test again with the tissue paper because sometimes you have a little bit of seepage that you want to double check a couple hours later just to make sure that there's no leakage. But I don't think there's going to be a problem with this. It's rare that I have problems with this side of the plumbing. Usually when I have leakage problems, it's on drain sides, not on with P-traps, not on pressure sides, interestingly enough. I'm not sure why that is, but it, that's been my experience. I believe everyone has a God-given creative spark, and this involves making things with a mechanical or technical bent, and sometimes repairing them. If this sounds interesting to you, I encourage you to check out the rest of the channel and see if this is something you're interested in. If it is, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell notification icon, and YouTube will let you know next time I have a video uploaded. Until then, go make something. Perfection's not required, fun is.